Garrett Hogan here with North Georgia Technical College doing some work for Practical Machinists. When I left you last time, we were working on these brake levers. Let's pick back up and see how they're going now. Well, the good news is it will clamp. So it does actually clamp on a piece of one inch bar like it's supposed to. So everything's working pretty good. Another thing to notice, you notice how the casting lines up really good on this front side, but really back on poor on the back side here. That requires some additional work to go about. So what we'll do at the very end, we'll take and hand work that area down so that blends out. It's a lot smoother transition. Now, next thing I'm going to do here is cut this angle that you see right here. So it's going to be an angle that's going to allow the brake lever somewhere to go. Now, as you can see, I have no dimensions. So I'm going to do something I do not normally recommend and I would not do it unless I had any other, any other choice here. I'm going to use a protractor on my print. I tell my students all the time not to do this right here, but in this situation it's going to work. You see if it's lining up at the top edge and lining up right there, i got a 43 degree angle one way and it's going to be off of 90, that would be 47 degrees. So 43 or 47 degrees, depending upon how I pull this off. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold this piece. I'm actually going to clamp on a piece of rod like this right here. And I'm going to angle it. The angle I need to cut. So I can actually go about cutting my piece to the dimensions it needs to be to allow the brake lever somewhere to go. Okay, so here's my setup. I took and clamped a piece of bar stock. I have it in the V-block right here. The V-block is clamping the bar stock right here. This is set to a 43 degree angle. I have already roughed out the majority of the material on this right here. So all that's left now is to do um, some finishing passes on it. I did still cut into my counterbore head right here. So I didn't quite get that, um, didn't quite get that, um, shallow enough on this one too so in case of both of these right here we'll have a little bit of air issue with the head but look at how this all goes together that's just that area right there is actually just all out in space so what i did over here was i did a program to do my finishing pass right here so we cut a rectangle pocket which is going to allow me to go about machining the um, profile to what it needs to be once again i could do this completely manual but i can also do it this way right here mode go to run click start release let start again make sure everything's ready there turn my spindle on click the go button and it's going to take off and finish this up Now the next thing I'm going to do is check my fit. Here I want to see if this right here will slide into there. And it will slide into there. It's a little bit snug, but it will slide into there. I'm going to do one more pass on that same setting and let it um, take a little bit of spring out of it.
it again. That's a little bit better right there. I think I can go with that. Might do a little bit of hand work on it once we get all said and done, but it should actually work there. So that's the angle. I had to be careful of my depths on this right here. I could not take huge depths of cuts. So I ended up taking about 50 thousandths of cut off of it on my depths and then basically worked over about 20 thousandths on my radial engagement to cut off to, to open it up to size. Next part I'm going to do is this right here, the uh, hole in the counter bore for the pivot bolt to be able to go through. There's this piece right here. Um, once again, they gave me a dimension, but where is this point right here? You know, this is something right here that's not a dimension I can really pull off of. There's nothing I can really use that for. So what I'm doing is setting it up over here, still clamped on the round stock. Getting it roughly aligned in the center of that boss area right here. And I'm just going to machine a hole through the piece here, both for the size of the pin and the size of the counterboard. So now I have both the hole and the counterboard machined. I gotta flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And then I've got the hole to drill on the end. Now to do the other side, I'm gonna take and use a gauge pin to get myself relatively close. This is a counterbore, so I don't have to indicate this in because of the fact that um, it's the counterbore, so it's gonna be clearance for a bolt head in this situation. If I were to indicate this in, this very, very, very expensive brake uh, lever would get even more expensive than it currently is. These right here are basically purchased are about a $200 part for a complete one set of brake levers. As you can imagine, um, I would be well, well over $200 in cost. So either I'd have a customer who is not happy at the bill they get, or I lose a lot of money trying to make these things. So the way underestimated never ending job continues. Okay, I got one, well, it's technically three more features on this right here. There is a hole here, a hole here, and there's a slot right here that allows the, the cable to go in there. Um, once again, I'm lacking dimensions. We took and measured some stuff that would be like this and found 60 thousandths for the one hole size, found 230 for the other. Um, had to kind of guess on the depths. Um, and then had to, you know, cut a slot in there for that to work. So now I flipped it around. I'm still clamped on my piece of round stock. I'm gonna hold it like this right here in the middle with a slight angle to it to allow me to basically be able to locate on this, um, you know, the rod in the piece here and be able to drill my holes where they need to be. My next piece is a hole in the end right here. Now, if I look at these right here, you can see the fact that the, the there's a slight angle on this surface right here. So what I'm gonna do is, it's a bit too tight to do that. Oops, let's loosen up just right here. I'm gonna get that angle to kind of match up a little bit here. And, I'm being completely honest. I am just eyeballing this. Being as good as I possibly can. My. And of course. Let go and it slips back. I feel pretty good about that. Clamp it down. Then I'm going to go about kind of roughly finding the center of this and drill my holes that remain. What I'm doing right now is trying to get an idea of where the center of this would be. So I'm making some little small little marks and kind of looking at it and seeing how I feel about them. Once again, I have surfaces that are going to be really hard to um, work with. I feel pretty good about that as my center. I'm going to go with that. Uh, once again, if this is something more precise, I'd have to take a lot more 
care of that but because we're dealing with a casting that there is no features I can pull off of on this you do what you can do it's part of what makes a part like this extremely tricky to work with I'm going to drill my 60 thousandths hole first. Break through to the other side. Now I'm going to drill my 230 thousandths hole. So here's my 230 thousandths hole, and I'm going to drill at a depth of 300 thousandths. That's the 300 thousandths hole right there. And the last thing I have to do is cut the slot in the surface right here. So I was gonna go in from the side and cut it. And then I realized that we have this nice little small 16th ML. It's got enough flute lengths to get in there and do it from the top. This is gonna save me some time. I should gain some time back here because I can come in here and plunge down and work this right here into the back into the center here gradually and slowly i won't be able to cut you know i'll have some issues when i get towards the end i'll have to kind of come in from this way here to cut that last little bit of that last little section out but it should be a lot easier and it avoids having to realign everything
Okay, if you look right in here, you can see I'm pretty much out of float lamps right there. But I'm also right there at where I need to be. So what I'm going to do is basically plunge straight down here and get uh, my depth where it needs to be. Sorry if I got a little shaky there. Trying to do this one-handed sometimes is really fun. Now I'm going to feed back this way a little bit. And I should have a complete slot in this thing now. And if you look, I do. So there you go. There you have it. Um, a job I never really should have agreed to. It proved to be a lot more difficult than it should have been. Well, I mean, I knew better. I came into it and I looked at it and saw this would be a great challenge for my students. Um, overall, my students were not able to handle this right here. This one was done by one of my students, but he is more the exception than the norm. He did a really nice job on this right here. To I'll just show you right now. This brake lever was done by another one of my students. And as you can see, the hole was drilled in the wrong position, so we had to we had to pin it. You know, and I'm probably gonna go back and redo this before I send it to the guy because I'm not happy with how that turned out. There's a little bit of the material missing at the top right there. So it's easy to look at things as a machinist and think, I can do this because I'm I can do I can do anything. Well, you can. But sometimes you have to filter yourself and go basically, you know what? There's all this stuff that's going to be involved in this right here. If I make this right here, it's going to have a hard time holding it, having a hard time machining it, having a hard time processing it. And these are $200 parts a piece. I would probably have had about $600 in labor in this if I wanted to have any chance to make anything if I did it myself. Um, if I had a you know somebody who was less less qualified doing it, you're probably talking about losing money guaranteed on a part like this. And once again, the customer is not going to go for six hundred dollars, six hundred dollars or machine machine labor for you know what's four hundred dollars worth of parts. So it's a lesson that I've learned, and sometimes I have to relearn it, like I did this time right now, where I agree to do something that I probably shouldn't have done. But once again, it is a good thing to know when to say no in industry. I am Derek Hogan. I'm here at North Georgia Technical College doing some work for Product Machinist. Um, if you have any questions or comments, uh, be sure to leave them in the comment section below. If you have any video ideas you'd like to see, put them there also. And do not forget to like and subscribe. Thanks for your time.